In this video, we will work on another advanced exercise of UiPath Generate Yearly Report. Before we start, I want to clarify that this exercise comprises two parts, the dispatcher and the performer. So yes, we will be creating two projects for this exercise. First is the dispatcher. The job of this project is to extract the work items from System 1, filter them, and add them to the orchestrator queue, and that's it. The second is the performer. This project will process all the work items added by the dispatcher in the orchestrator queue. I will be using the UiPath Hints Guide in completing this exercise. I recommend carefully reading this project's documentation to familiarize yourself with the process flow. And this content will be a series of video. I do it this way to give you time to rest your eyes in between videos, follow the 2020 rule, and don't sit for a long time. Just a healthy tip. And don't worry, after completing these videos, I can guarantee that you will get a 100% score for this project. So now that you know how this will work, let's start developing the first project. Alright, so open your UiPath Studio and let's create a new project using the RE framework template. We can name this project generate oops generate yearly report and let's add the dispatcher word in here so we can easily identify which one is the dispatcher and which one is the performer project. You can put a different description. After that, let's hit the create button. So here, every time we create a project using the RE framework template, we first need to identify what should be the variable type of the transaction item variable. So following the guide, our transaction item value will be a page number. We have two options here. We can use the integer type because it is a number or we can also use a string type because later in the process, we will concatenate it to a selector. I will recommend using the string type instead. So now let's start updating our transaction item variable type. Let's start here in the main workflow. Select the main, con main workflow and, or the main container and then open the variable panel. And here, look for the transaction item variable. So by default, the variable type is QItem. We need to change it to a string type. So look for the string type, and that will update our transaction item variable type. So after we change that, uh, we will then get errors from different framework states. So let's start fixing the get transaction data state first. So double click uh, from the states to open it. And let's start with the then block. So here we just need to remove the uh, nothing value, click outside the activity and assign the nothing value again. Click outside the activity and that should fix that error. Next for the else block, uh, we need to change the variable type of the in both workflow we cannot do that in here so what we can do is to uh, open the workflow and then here we'll, we'll look for the um, arguments tab and look for the out transaction item argument so we also need to change this uh, argument type into the string type so let's do that and hit save and we can also see that we have error in here. So we will not be getting transaction items from the orchestrator queues so that we can delete this get transaction item activities. And we will delete that from, from the retry uh, container because this uh, container is for this activity. Since we don't need it, we can also delete this. So you can just right click from that activity and select the delete button. And make sure to click the save button. And now we can return to the main workflow, hit or click.
click the import arguments and now you can see that there's no uh, variable assigned to the out transaction item argument we can now assign again the transaction item variable and it should fix the error because they now have match or they have now the same type hit ok to save the update and we can see that we still have a warning so to fix that open the exception block and do the same trick for this kind of error so delete the nothing volume click outside the activity assign the nothing volume again and click outside the activity and now we can see that we don't have any more error for this uh, sequence we can now hit save and now we can go back to the main container and here we have a warning on the process transaction state so let's double click to open that state and here we can see that the first error is within the invoke process workflow activity and that is due to a uh, variable mismatch again so we need to fix this uh, argument type from Q item to string. So again, let's click open workflow to open the process workflow and look for the in transaction item argument in the argument uh, window and change the argument type from Q item to string. So after making the changes, make sure to hit, hit the save button and close the workflow. And here we can click import arguments to assign the transaction item variable and you can see that the argument type of this argument is now updated to string and that should fix the error for that invoke activity and here we have another error for the set transaction status uh, activity or for the invoke set transaction status activity and that is again due to a variable mismatch because if we will inspect the arguments we can see that we have another argument type q item that causing the issue so let's open the workflow again for the set transaction status let's start by uh, opening the arguments tab look for the um, in transaction item variable or argument and change the argument type to string and we can delete this nothing value we don't need that after that you can see that we got another errors in here and we will not be needing this activity for this project so we can just delete this three transaction status for the success business exception and system exception so after doing that make sure to connect this increment transaction sequence to the flow so here we should connect the true branch as well as the branch in here and after making that changes click the save button to save the update now we can close that workflow and here in the process transaction state click import argument to assign the transaction item variable to the in transaction item argument and that should also fix the issue and here we can see that we still have a warning so we need to figure out where is that uh, warning is coming from we can check the business rule exception block so just click in here and here we can see that within this block we have warning in this try catch activity so let's open that open the try block and here uh, we have an error with the import arguments let's check it and here we have a an in transaction argument that doesn't have any variable assigned so here we just need to assign the transaction item variable hit ok that should fix that issue and here we still have a warning next is to open the exception block so click that block again click the import argument and here we just also need to assign the transaction item variable to this argument hit ok after making the changes and now 
we don't have any more warning for this process transaction state. Make sure to hit save and let's go back to the main workflow. So in the main workflow, uh, click the analyze file and select validate project to make sure that we don't have any errors within the workflow before we start creating the additional workflows and editing some of the framework workflows. So if if uh, if everything is good, you should see this uh, message as well on the error list window that there should be no error found. And that is the first step in working with our dispatcher project.